Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> Today, uh, I'm going to make a radius block. Uh, as you know, I've been working on my uh, acoustic guitar, and I'm getting to the point now where you know, I've got my neck block made, and I have to start thinking about uh, my fretboard and uh, putting a radius on that, and, and just starting to prepare to make that part of the guitar. So the reason why, uh, you know, in order to make that radius, by the way, you need to, uh, you know, either buy something or make it. And, you know, it's, there's a lot of different radiuses you could put on a fretboard, depending on the type of guitar. Uh, I bought a, a whole bunch of these, uh, <coughs> these radius gauges and they, they indicate you know the inch radius that that it's uh, milled to and you can check your radius it's good for setting up uh, guitars and whatnot when you're leveling fretboards and stuff like that um, you know so you can see here I've got about you know ten or so different ones and you know you might you might uh, different guitars use different ones so the problem is um, if you go on, let's just say, stumac.com, uh, you know, every one of theirs, um, all the different uh, type of uh, radius boards, depending on the, the radius, it's about $25, probably closer to $35 with shipping and all that tax. So I really don't feel like spending that kind of money. I know this can be made. Um, so the particular uh, radius that I'm going for, for this, uh, the Dreadnought guitar I'm making, is 16 inches. And basically when I started to really research it, it's quite simple. It's, um, you can make that radius uh, if you take a pivot point and pull a string line 16 inches away, and that arc that is created makes a 16 inch radius. Quite simple, right? Not much to that. <laughs> so I figured there has to be a way I can easily do that. So here's what I've come up with. Um, here's something I bought a while back too. I just wanted to show you. This is just a like a radius gauge and it's 16. It's got a few common uh, radiuses uh, milled into it for checking. It's similar to to these but this might give you a better idea of just the subtle radius that we're creating for for a 16 inch radius I don't know if you can even see that put it right to the edge maybe uh, you know there's hardly a gap in there it is quite small um, you know the, the smaller the, the radius the, in, the inch radius the, the more pronounced that uh, that radius is so what I'm thinking of doing is I just kind of mocked this up off camera and this is just I took my little trim router it had a couple of uh, like mounting holes for, for like an accessory fence and things like that and I just took a couple of pieces of scrap wood I had a you know 3 8 inch um, plywood I took a 1 by one by two pine, and I just could, sort of made it uh, a right angle here, screwed it together nice and tight. You want, I wanted this to be sturdy. Screwed my router to this device, and I, I just put a little piece of scrap wood to kind of fill in the gap so it wasn't sort of wobbling around because I, I, I didn't want the router to, to pivot at all on a different radius other than the radius that I'm. Uh, the pivot point that I'm, I'm going to build into this jig. And my thought is that I can take like a piece of plywood here with another piece of scrap wood that I can create a pivot point on. And so the thought is if I maybe attach this to this little piece of scrap wood, I can create a pivot like that. And then I can just simply put my uh, a block of wood, like a 2x4, even something like this, 
into into the vise, and if I measure out 14 inches from the tip of the blade, um, that that would be my my 14 inch radius. If I wanted to do a 16 inch radius, I could just measure out 16 inches, attach my pivot point at 16 inches uh, away, and then I can just uh, start up the router and slide it back and forth and then, uh, you know, cutting into my block and then I can just lower this down, make another couple passes, so on and so forth, if you understand, uh, if I'm explaining this correctly. So, I think uh, maybe just uh, at this point, I'll just start... Uh, Attaching all this together so that I can more properly demonstrate it, and I think I think this is going to work just fine. Uh, you know, I can change my pivot point. I'll just have like a sh uh, you know like a wood screw, uh, and I can change that pivot point quite easily. I can also change the depth of my uh, router bit as well. Um, I mean, I won't have a lot of change, but I can fine tune it by just moving. Uh, the bit up and down, but kind of crude, but should be pretty accurate, so let's get started. Alright, <clears throat> I've made a couple modifications. Um, so, I've moved the whole base over so that essentially it is uh, will be centered with my block. So when I have this in the vise, uh, it starts out when it's 90 degrees to the table, it is centered on what is going to be my radius block. Uh, I've also attached uh, my dust collection hose to it because it makes quite a mess and I also took the 16 inch um, radius gauge and put it on here just to sort of test um, the accuracy here of everything and it looks pretty good. Uh, one last thing I want to do is I'm just going to take a call and I want to clamp, I want to put something that is at a right angle here just so when I'm sliding this up and down I don't have to fiddle all that much with it. I'm going to put a screw in it because screw it. Okay, that's good. You turn on the dust collection. modifications here. Uh, I didn't like the way the bench vise was holding the workpiece, so what I did was I screwed on a base um, perpendicular to uh, the router, the plane that the router is on, put in a couple cleats here to hold my board, and I'm using just a cam clamp to secure the piece in there. I, I found that with the bench vise, the, the bench vise would sort of rock a little bit as you tightened it. It would kind of, you know, I don't know what the word is, it would just be cockeyed a little bit, and it wasn't, the cut was not square um, to the sides. It, it was, the piece was all over the place. So this is much more secure, 
Uh, I did find that this is like a little dangerous in the sense that if you don't go left to right because of the rotation of the router bit, uh, it'll just pull itself through and whip through. I almost uh, took a hand off a couple times. So I think it's smart, with, at least with this router, to go from left to right and then clean it up going the opposite way. I'm taking off a lot of material, about a quarter of an inch with each pass at least, but um, it is what it is. And I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Um, I might have to build up my my cleats, have my cleats come out just a little longer because I don't have a really good surface to clamp on and my block, you know, only goes so far. So, I don't know. I'm just uh, going to do a couple passes just to see if it's if it works a little better, if it's sturdy enough. If it's sturdier, then I'll just build this up a little bit so I have a better area to clamp and we'll go from there. Bad. So you can see that's pretty good. A little light sanding will clean that up well. This is how it was coming out with the other setup I had. Not very consistent with each pass. Let's just double check this with the gauge. Looks pretty good. Alright, another slight modification. Um, I made this little sled uh, that will slide in between these cleats because what I was finding was I can only, since my block is only like three or four inches long, I can, once I got to a certain height, I could no longer safely clamp it into place. So the idea is I clamped this sled, I, I uh, screwed my block uh, to the sled here. It's just a piece of uh, plywood with an extra block screwed on. Then I screwed the, the actual radius block onto that, and I'll clamp. I'll put a cam clamp on here like that to secure it. So I think this should do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna run through this again, and hopefully uh, this is the last thing. I'll just uh, try and radius the whole thing now, and uh, hopefully this will be done.
worked out a lot better. Let's get it out of here. It's quite a mess, this mahogany. Came out nice. Real nice. A little bit of sanding will clean that up well. Let's take this. Let's unscrew it off the sled. some plans because it's not that comfortable in the hand so I want to uh, put a little cove into this and I have an idea on how I'm going to do that. Let's take a look. So how I'm going to try and do this is run it across I want to run it across the saw here on an angle. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, it's kind of dangerous. But, uh, the blade will be hardly raised at all, and we're just going to do a couple of, uh, couple of passes, and just to put a little cove into this. See what it puts a little bit of a cove in there, and I'm just going to round over the top of that there with some sandpaper, and we should be good. So, saved about 35, 40 bucks, and uh, now I've got a jig where, you know, I can, uh, I can make any type of radius block uh, that I need. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see here. Um, appreciate everybody watching, and we'll see you all next time.